With the price of everything having gone up over the last few years, does the 50-30-20 rule still work? Let's go ahead and break it down. First, let's define what the 50-30-20 rule is and how it has helped me to become a much better investor. Well, the 50-30-20 rule came out maybe 20, 25 years ago, and it is a budgeting tool, a budgeting strategy that says that 50% of your income, your take-home pay, should be for your mandatory expenses, your needs. So that's rent, that's daycare, that's student loans, groceries, all that stuff should be taken care of with half of your monthly income. 30% should be used for things that you can just blow money on, which is the most fun part, I guess. And then you have the 20%, which is for savings and investing. Now, I've done videos about this. I've written about it in two of my books. And again, it has been one of the biggest contributors to my financial success by being able to follow this rule. But things are different from the time that I started my adult life right after college versus what things are now in 2024 and what things will be in 2025, 26 and beyond. So does it still work? Most people would argue no, but I have a caveat and I think that this is the thing that we all need to use when we're talking about money and when we're talking about rules of thumb and everything in between. So first thing is this, yes, the 50, 30, 20 rule does still work because the math is still gonna be the math at the end of the day. Ideally, you want to make sure that you have half your paycheck for the stuff you absolutely have to do and the other half is for you to have fun and save and continue to grow your wealth. That's not going to change. Regardless of what your income is, everybody wants to have that. The reality is not everybody will. And I'll tell you right now, if you are somebody who is 25 and younger, the 50, 30, 20 rule is probably not going to happen for you to begin with. It didn't happen for me. When I first started, I was at like 65%, close to 70% of my money was going to mostly rent, okay? Mostly rent, mostly groceries, and whatever it was I had to fix on my car. Life and finances are liquid or fluid, I guess is a better word to say, because things do change. Your income usually does go up as you age, as you get more experience, and as you switch jobs from time to time. And we've also had studies that show that when you switch jobs every two to three years, you actually get a significant pay bump versus people who stay there. Like I've been a teacher, a financial advisor, I've worked in government, I've done a whole bunch of different things, and it's primarily the biggest contributor to my annual income increasing by going from one thing to the next after I've gathered enough experience and decided to make that jump. But when I started, it did not start off great. Even my investing journey, we talk about you know hitting six figures when it comes to your investment portfolio, getting close to that half million mark and everything else. I started investing with just $100 a month, and that was it. But as my situation changed, as I moved across the country and things moved it moved for me and changed, then I decided, all right, look, let's go to 10%. All right, let's go to 12%. Let's go to 15% and invest as much as we could to get to where we are. So yes, the math does work. Yes, the rule does work. But don't put that pressure on yourself to say that, hey, I am disappointed or I am a failure because I didn't get exactly 50% or rent is too damn high, and it is, that I can't get to 50%. It may not work in that way. And it is okay to say, look, it might be 65% for now, but I need to make sure that I'm protecting and having these other buckets. And I think that is the other thing that you absolutely wanna focus on. You, regardless of what your percentage is going to be, it is important for you to have a bucket of money, whatever percent it is, a percent higher than zero, I'll say that, that you need to have to enjoy your money today, okay? Some people are gonna tell you, you should never walk into a restaurant and you should never eat out and do absolutely nothing until you've taken care of all of your debt and all these other responsibilities. Yeah, you should focus on that. You should prioritize that. However, finance, investing, savings, paying off debt is not a crash diet. You cannot, and it is not wise, to say I'm going to do none of those things for an extended period of time, a year, two years, three years, just to get something paid off. What I would argue is say, look, if you want to be extreme and pay off a debt or reach a goal very quickly, reduce that 30% for fun and enjoyment and say, all right, well, maybe 15, maybe 10 if you want to really trim it down, but have something to reward yourself as you are going throughout this journey. Because again, just like crash diets and things like that, they don't work. Right, They'll, you'll get results very quickly and then things will backfire shortly after. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to be sustained for the long term as you're going throughout this journey. And then obviously, you wanna set something aside for your savings and investments. And within that 20%, 
you can allocate that however you want. Okay, now I've said 15% for, for investing, you can do 5% for savings. It all depends on how much you have in savings now, right? And how much you want to have in investing. And you can play around with that number. We don't have to be strict when it comes to this particular rule. Now, with all that stuff out there, right? You have something set aside for your enjoyment, something set aside for savings, and then you have what you need, right? Taking care of that as well. But that doesn't make things comfortable. Okay, if you're looking at your expenses now and you're saying, look, man, 80 to 90% of my bills are just that, right? They, it is just bills. I have not had an opportunity to save or invest or enjoy, right? So how do I kind of play around with this equation? Now, there are two ways. One of these is, are, is a lot more obvious than the other, right? Most people are going to focus on trying to reduce those expenses, which when possible, you absolutely should. I had to go through my budget recently and cut out a few things because I'm looking at my Amazon bills. I'm looking at, you know, my YouTube TV bills. I'm like, hey, Super Bowl's over. Do I really watch TV that much? The answer is no, I don't because I'm here on YouTube. But I had to say, look, all right, let's, let's cut some of these expenses. Unfortunately, right, for all of us, rent, mortgage, those aren't expenses that can easily be cut or reduced. So the other side of this equation is to see how to increase your income, which is why when I brought up earlier, when you do switch jobs after every two, three, four years, you do get a significant pay bump. That might be something that you may want to explore, but also there are other side hustles and side business ideas that can also help you to increase your income because that's what it's about at the end of the day. I can either cut my expenses down to where it fits under that 50% or as close as I can get, or I can just increase my income and make it under 50% just by making more. Now, obviously making more, right, is a lot more, it's, it's a lot easier to say rather than do, right? You can just say that, but there are some strategies that you can use and some strategies that I have used over time that have helped me to increase my income and make sure that I can get as close as I can to those ratios. You want to know some of those side hustle ideas and other ways that you can increase your income, then you want to check out this video right here.